What's the difference between breaking 80 and almost breaking 80? Is a one club difference in distance the major factor? Where's the difference on the same course from the same tees? Didi's flight may be a bit softer with a fade and land and stick where it lands, while the Fox has a more penetrating flight with more rollout and a gentle two-way shape. <laughs> what a man. What a shot. Great shot. Thank you. Whew. Great shot. <laughs> With over 230 yards into the green, both warriors need to lay up to their preferred distances, which usually will be inside 100 yards. Didi plans to hit a fairway wood to a point where he can hit his comfy wedges into the green. He hits a chunky one, which leaves a long approach shot into the breeze and uphill. Layups on par fives are very important shots to lead to the favored shot into the green. Even single-figure handicaps can mess them up, so forgive yourself, player. The fox pulls his layup shot, but he is inside wedge range, so it will offset the effect of being in the rough. Didi's chunky monkey left him a lot of work to do. The lower ball flight we can expect with a hybrid is a tough shot with Didi's fade. He's hitting into a green that is well guarded on the left and also slopes left to right. The execution of the layup and resulting shot was the difference and it turned into a two shot swing because Didi's chip was from the deeper rough onto a down slope. This is a short sided shot caused by the second shot. The fox was able to hit his high lofted oh, club hot. with a higher ball flight from his anticipated distance and held the green. Jeez, man, that is shot of the day. <laughs> from that lie. If Didi had missed short and to the right, we would have had an easier chip. Into the stiff breeze and up the slope, this par 3 plays right into Didi's hands. He knows he can only hit a lower spinning hybrid, so it will sail through the wind. His 5 or 6 iron with a softer flight will be held up in the wind. The hybrid is one of his confident clubs, so he trusts it fully to be on the number. He is committed 100%. The fox is between a 5 and 6 iron. The wind will affect his ball flight, so he's not 100% committed yet to his selected iron. His ball sails to the right, into a bunker, and into a semi-fried egg lie. The ball flight and its reaction to the wind helped Didi commit to his shot 110%, while the white fox was only 75% committed. That's a one-shot swing through the mental game alone. Any golfer committed with every fiber of his body will always execute a better shot than a golfer at less than 100%.
The fox goes super safe and puts it way out to the right hand side so that he will guarantee him an approach from the fairway. Perfect shot. Didi hits it pure just on the wrong line and ends up in the bunker. We can see the practice time pays off as the white fox nails a crispy baby face six iron to a couple of feet from 160 yards. <laughs> Didi's slight error in his tee shot caused a knock-on effect of leaving himself a third shot over a bunker to a pin cut tight on the right side. Notice how there are tiny errors and a handful great putts that make the difference between one man under 80 and the other over 80. That's another two shot swing. If Didi had been a bit further right on his tee shot, we may have seen a one shot difference. So it's clear time with the pro and working on contact has definitely made those iron shots a little crispier. Sure, look at that. Great shot. Oh yeah. It's okay. Didi had the major advantage on the chip shot greenside. With all the green to work with, his usually solid short game would be up and down 8 out of 10 times. It's a very fine tight rope, but he definitely put himself in the best position if he were to miss the green. They come out square on this hole, and we can't expect, while trying to break 80, to only be making pars. The course giveth and the course taketh away. So far, the tee ball hasn't been much of a difference in the game, and on the par 5, this continues. They're still going to need to lay up from similar situations off the tee. Now, not much further. But Didi uses a fairway wood and gets it to a very manageable distance. The fox lays up to a bit further back than that, so the difference will come down to the approach shot and not the layup shot. Yeah, that's safe. Beautiful. So good. Oh. Bad kick, bad kick. Bad kick, but not bad. Chip in a putt. Didi hits another chunky one, and it's very seldom that I see him do that. He may hit a couple in the teeth, but chunking is not common. The white fox hits a crispy approach shot, and this sets him up for a decent pitch. Didi's fourth shot finds the bunker and will be the difference on this hole. Hitting the green in three was likely, but a fat shot prevented that. It's very rare to see DD take five to hit a par five green, but on another day, that seven iron is on the green in three shots. That's how fine the line is between an 81 and a 79. Just a couple bizarre shots. The fox pummels one down the gullet and runs out of fairway. Didi remains on the short stuff, but a bit further back. The hole isn't long, so the difference will be negligible. The art comes in the approach shot. Didi leaves his slightly short with a monster putt, but he is on the green, and that's the main goal. White fox puts his on the green, also a pretty long distance from the cup. The strongest part of his game is putting most days. 
And it's not every day you see an amateur this capable of sinking putts of any length so easily. If you want to demoralize any match play opponent, get brilliant at putting. Never three putt and always threaten the hole. It drives them nuts. A potent flat stick can negate some poor shots and can save a hole when it all seems lost. Could be, could be. Oh, oh, what a shot. Crispy baby. Crispy baby. <laughs> Crispy baby. <laughs> Oh, oh, what a drive, bro. That's okay. Yeah, well out. Good shot. The ninth hole was identically played but the difference was one extra putt. On the front nine, we see a difference of six shots between the two players. It's clearly not difference in distance off the tee. What I see is that the fox has a okay, consistent I'm crispiness green. because of his practice and training. His flat stick is always his strength and probably always will be. He's a monster oh, with a putter shot. in hand. Great the shot. fox hits two more greens than Didi and taken two less putts. Their drives have been pretty similar, actually with no discernible advantage. Didi's hit more fairways, but only one of these four holes has hit the green in regulation. The Fox hit two greens from three fairways that he hit. Amazingly, the Fox has converted four of his five greens in regulation into birdies. The approach game, and especially the putting, has created a six-shot difference instead of a two- or three-shot difference. But that's exactly it. Today, the fox is jamming. Tomorrow, the fortunes could be reversed. A lip out or two instead of those birdies, with Didi not chunking two shots, and the scoreboard looks very different. Be kind to yourself, players. The game swings in roundabouts. On the back nine, can Didi reel it back in and hit some crispy approaches and drain some putts? He's not far off, but it's easy to see how a few chunky shots and a couple greens missed in the wrong area can add to the score steadily. It's a fine line, and we can only stay focused in the moment, not focused on the end of the round score. Take one, one shot. One, three, Kenny. Stand over there. Yeah, good, good. Okay. Good. Beauty. Get in the hole. Who <laughs> fades it into the back left pin? What a man. What a shot. Too much Good. Yeah, it's fine there, don't worry about that. 
In these two holes, we see the approach game is the decider between scoring. Over 11 holes, Didi's average approach shot, including par 3s, has been 140 yards and he's hit 4 greens out of 11. The Fox's average approach distance has been 140 as well. The signs are clear, players. 100 to 160 yard shots are what you need to move to the low 80s. Into the 70s, you're going to need to make some putts every now and then and get up and down when you miss the greens. And when you miss the greens, you need to miss in the correct area. Perfect, player, perfect. Short-sided, in front of the rock, onto a downslope. Pins about four yards from the left. Yeah, that's a tough shot. Didi leaves another shot on the table by unusually missing a short putt. He very seldom misses the short ones, but with that disappointment, he sees the error of his ways and has his first long overdue sweet swing how many, lubricant. How many last night? Notice on the next six holes how he hits greens in regulation and when he doesn't, oh, yeah, he misses in the correct areas to leave easier chips that give him more green to work with instead of hitting to pins on down slopes and over obstacles. What a shot! That's your drive of the day, man. <laughs> cool, beauty. Great shot. Great shot. In the water. No! <laughs> Good part. That's tasty, player. That's tasty. On the green, baby.
Over the, over the tree, I said over the tree. <laughs> A little fader. Off the rock. What a shot. Oh, oh who was going to come down? Perfection player. Thank you. Great strike. Should be fun there. Eh? Uh, too much right. Okay. What a fun. <laughs> White heart, baby. <laughs> In the end, Didi had an average approach of 135 yards, while the Fox averaged about 140 yard approaches into the greens. That includes all par threes as well. The difference in score is five shots, but where did Didi lose them to the Fox? Fox made four of his five birdies with some really amazing putts. He hit only one more green than Didi, but when he did, he converted them into five birdies. The flat stick made a huge difference between the two and the score could have opened wider by two shots if the Fox hadn't three putted twice. Didi hit nine fairways out of a possible 14. That's three more than White Fox and Didi was five over for those nine fairway holes. On the remaining five holes where he missed the fairways, he scored five over par as well. Some say fairways are not important, but I beg to differ. Didi didn't make any long putts and missed a couple shorter ones. The flat stick wasn't terrible for him, but the fox just dropped some long putts, which he does every round like a bouse. The four par threes averaged 145 yards, and Didi was one under on the par threes like a total savage. Didi's par fives were played in three over par, and anyone looking to break into the 70s must target par fives to be no worse than level par. The fox par three work left him one over par while his par fives finished at level par. This is the kind of scoring in line with single figure handicap golf. It allows for a bit of tomfoolery on the par fours. I like to see par five and par three holes in level par. It seems most good scores have these eight holes in total of less than one over par. The remaining par fours need to be managed in a way where the shorter ones are targeted by working back from the green and leaving your favorite approach shot from a safe spot. Medium and long par fours should be attacked when a good tee shot is hit, but if the green is not easily hittable, we must miss the green in the correct place for an easy chip. 
It won't always happen, but accepting the bogey or double bogey and moving on is key. Overall, golf is so dynamic, and we can see if the fox's putter had gone cold, it could have been an 80 for him. And if Didi hadn't chunked two shots and missed a couple short ones, he could have been at 78.